songs, I guess. Have you ever loved someone so much you given on for? Not the expression, no, literally given on. The Voracious Conquests of Nightmare Moon. Written by Cherry Licious. The night was crisp and cool. The gibbous light of the autumn moon shining brightly down on the festivities that abounded in the small provincial town of Ponyville. The whole town had been decorated from head to toe in the spirit of the season. Black and orange streamers, bales of hay, expertly carved pumpkins illuminated with fresh golden candles, casting strange shadows on the streets as ponies happily abounded through the fair grounds. Phillies, colts, and adults alike were dressed in their costumes of choice just for the occasion. Nightmare Night was here, and the populace relished in the seasonal merriment. The thick scents of cinnamon drifted in the air as ponies, young and old, competed in classic games such as bobbing for apples and spider toss, while music thrummed from a nearby stage set up in town square. Surrender to us your candy, little ponies! Luna exclaimed in a traditional royal cantalot voice. Or we shall take all of you instead to sate our hunger. Small fox screams of fear rose up as a group of fillies hastily offered up their stuffed bags of holiday goodies to the imposing night princess. Luna had chosen Ponyville to visit this year and had used her magic to appear in the dark yet voluptuous form of the holiday's unintentional founder, Nightmare Moon. Storm clouds crackled with flashes of lightning and thunder as she loomed over the small clearing just outside of town where the fillies and colts came to offer up their goodies before running off giggling in delight at their quote-unquote spooky encounter with their demon mother of all nightmares. Chuckling to herself in amusement at the little one's playfulness to her little performance, she descended to the forest floor where they had left their bags of candies for her to enjoy. They were especially prepared little satchels of five or six assorted treats that the adults had handed out to the young ones before they made their little trek out to the clearing to offer them up. Luna didn't like the idea of the fillies having to give up their full quarry of candy, so she had instituted the little baggy tradition to make things more fair and a lot more fun. Opening up one of the six little packages that the fillies had left for her, she was delighted to find several pieces of chocolate, a few marshmallow moons, and a large piece of apple-flavored bubblegum. She smiled, looking at it in her hoof, as it actually was shaped like a tiny apple. She chuckled a little as she tossed it in her mouth and let the flavor settle on her tongue. Blowing a sizable bubble, she relished in how well the night had been so far. She loved getting out of the castle and spending time amongst her subjects. It made her feel so warm inside seeing them smile and enjoy the night, especially on nightmare night. However, her thoughts were interrupted when her ears twitched, registering three familiar voices. Princess Luna! Princess Luna! Princess Luna! exclaimed Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo as they came gallivanting down the winding trail towards the clearing and the lunar monarch. With a big toothy smile, Princess Luna, or rather Nightmare Moon in this case, rose to her ornately dressed hooves, spreading her wings and bellowing playfully. Who dares disturb us while we delight in our feast of assorted sweets? The three excitable fillies giggled in amusement at Nightmare's booming question. Apple Bloom was dressed as a bright shining apple that she had made herself, 
on along with Applejack's help. Sweetie Belle wore a marshmallow costume that complemented her complexion perfectly, and Scootaloo was dressed as a mighty eagle, though it looked more like a chicken costume than anything. We do! Scootaloo exclaimed happily while the others chuckled as they came to a halt. The Cutie Mark Crusaders! Nightmare smiled, showing off her fangs, trying to act intimidating as she revered up for another performance. Well, thou best hope thou has brought offerings. She exclaimed playfully. Or we shall have to take you three instead to sate our savage hunger. Flaring her horn, she magically summoned a swirling vortex of dark thundering clouds as she gave out a classic wild villainous cackle as bolts of light tore through the air behind her. As the thunder subsided, it was replaced with the cheerful giggles of the little trio as they looked up at the towering dark alicorn mare. Oh no, guys! Apple Bloom exclaimed with a knowing smile. We lost our candy bags on the way here. We got nothing to give Nightmare Moon. Hearing this, Luna was caught off guard and pulled herself out of character for a moment as she looked down at the three smiling fillies. Huh? Thou hasn't brought us any offerings? She said, feeling a bit confused and flustered. This hadn't happened before. They shook their heads in response, their smiles never wavering. Luna looked at them, feeling very confused now. She wasn't really sure how to react, so she decided to improvise. Um, then we shall be merciful. She began. Be gone from this place. Uh, and don't return until you save the proper offerings or we shall devour every last one of you." Hearing the princess's response, the trio looked at each other questioningly before looking back up at the still somewhat flabbergasted monarch. Wait, Apple Bloom interjected. Aren't you gonna eat us? If Luna wasn't flabbergasted before, she definitely was now. She shook her head as her eyes widened in surprise, confusion, and shock at the little farm pony's inquiry. Um, n no? Luna replied, fully out of character now. Of course not. Why would you think that? Well, that's the rule, duh! Sweetie giggled. If ponies don't bring you any sweets, then you gobble them up instead. That's like Nightmare Night 101. It's tradition! Luna was speechless. Were they actually asking her to eat them? She stared at them with her mouth agape, while the three sat in front of her smiling, almost wiggling about on the spot in excitement. Collecting herself, she decided to try and address the situation rationally. My little ponies, I don't think you realize what exactly you are asking of me. Luna asked nervously, putting on her best face. I don't really do that anymore. That's something I put aside a very long, long time ago. I don't think I could even do it if I tried. Luna looked on, smiling nervously at the fillies, noticing how sullen the three of them had become at hearing that it might actually be impossible for their request to be carried out. For just a second, she was tempted. Ever so slightly tempted to try for old time's sake. The old tradition apparently had never been outlawed, really. It had just fallen out of favor in the wake of the incident before her, um, exile. Raising an eyebrow, Scootaloo let a mischievous smirk trace across her lips as she whispered to her two companions. Oh, come on now, Luna! 
she said playfully as she took a few steps closer to the night princess. I know you can do it. I mean, could you say no to this? With that, Scootaloo twirled around, lifting up the feathery skirt of her costume and lifting her flank into the air, rhythmically shaking them back and forth seductively. I mean, just look at how plump and juicy my flanks are, commented Scootaloo. A lot of dark meat back there, all nice and tender. Bet it will feel awesome stuffed inside that stomach of yours. Luna blushed as the little Pegasus shook her rear before her, but blushed even harder hearing about how filling and rich said rear would taste and feel inside her stomach. She tried to look away, but her body betrayed her. A light growl rose from her lift stomach. Ah, I, I think I hear some rumblies and some ponies tumblies. Apple Bloom teased, pressing her ear into Luna's stomach, nuzzling tenderly. Sounds like some pony could use a nice, juicy, plump apple inside their belly right about now. Curse these little ponies. How were they so expertly able to push her buttons in all the right fashions? Her stomach growled at the prospect of what they were proposing. And the more they egged her on, the more empty and barren her gut grew. She could feel her mouth and throat salivating with greater intensity, a small stream managing to escape her lips and trickle down her chin. A small sweat was building on her forehead as well. Her body was pleading for it, and she knew it. But could she do it? After all this? It, it had been so long. Taking a breath, she nervously gave them her answer. Well, I suppose if it means so much to you, as your princess, I will oblige. The excitable trio's squeals of delight shook her a bit as they jumped into a line in front of her, giggling profusely. Apple Bloom stood in the front, giving her friends a triumphant smile knowing that Luna was finally playing along. Resting her flanks on the cool grass, Nightmare Moon ignited her magic, which swiftly enveloped around the little earth pony as she slowly opened her mouth, stretching it wider and wider in anticipation of what was to come. Apple Bloom looked back at her friends and gave a knowing wink to them before turning around and calling out, Fold! However, she was cut off from revealing that they had only been fooling around as her head was suddenly stuffed straight into Luna's gaping maw, the night princess concentrating with all her might on achieving one goal. Any sense of amusement the little fillies had achieved from their supposed prank quickly dissipated as they saw their friend begin to squirm about, her shoulders quickly disappearing between Luna's lips. For a few awkward seconds, the little filly's hooves found themselves flailing about as she tried to signal Luna to stop, though her efforts were in vain as Luna tried to unhinge her jaw. A muffled pop rang out from her, making both Scootaloo and Sweetie's eyes widen as they stared on in disbelief and shock, unable to move their brains to try to process what was happening. Mmm, bottoms up, Luna said mentally, tilting her head back. Luna felt a shudder of joy and pleasure ripple through her body, relishing in the feeling of her lost hobby before she clenched her throat, constricting her powerful throat muscles and gave a powerful, lewd gulp. Apple Bloom found herself lurching forward, her forelegs pressed flat against her as darkness overtook her. The sound was muted, wet, and echoing. 
a wallowing squelch, a gurgle, and a fluid surge. Matted down fur, smeared in goo, slapping against smooth, rubbery flesh, pushed down through sheets of mucus into a tube of such exquisite, debilitating tightness that apple bloom shape stretched through the alicorn's slender neck. Luna could feel the filly's head spreading the confines of her throat. Plunged deeper into the darkness, the filly was left breathless, unable to pry her face from the fur-tight flesh that encompassed her. She could barely squirm, whining and wincing as each powerful ring collapsing and squeezing her down with crushing fury. Taking another equally powerful gulp, Luna dragged the whole of Apple Bloom's body into her gullet, leaving only the end of her tail exposed between her lips, while the rest of her body curled up tightly, forming an unbelievably large bulge in the alicorn's throat. Oh, my. The two fillies muttered in unison as they watched their friend slide down Luna's throat, making muffled cries the whole way down. Luna, Luna stop! They finally cried out. Luna, it was just a joke! We were, we're only playing! We didn't, we didn't think, think you really, really do it! Please, Luna, spit my mouth. mouth! Luna didn't respond. Closing her eyes, she tilted her head back again and loosened her chest piece, taking another swallow and causing the bulge of Apple Bloom to vanish entirely into her torso. Apple Bloom's cries drowned out as she slid into the dark alicorn's waiting stomach, causing a fairly large bulge to form inside it. Apple Bloom arrived at the stomach after what felt like minutes despite her swift and brutal journey, having only taken seconds. The cardia stretched around her hooves and muzzle, welcoming them into the stomach. The blistering air inside scorched her face, making her one in discomfort. As more of her body was thrust inside, the staggering oven-like temperature grew on her, making her feverish and slow-minded. She could feel the folded walls stretching and flattening under her weight smoldering in hot liquids of varying consistency. Some thick as honey, others watery, others like tar. Some were oily and greasy, others sticky. In all, it was a pit of such wildly varying textures it was all amalgamated into one foul sensation, one of being subsumed and wrapped in clinging, inescapable sludged. But once her head was pushed in, it was the smell that took her. The heat and the slime was nothing on all the pervasive, soul-destroying stink that curdled in the air. It was suffocating. Even though she could now breathe, she found every breath a struggle to keep down, a fight to draw in. Though she felt no other matter in the stomach aside from the secretions, there was an abhorred stink of death, of decay, all wrapped with an acidic kick that burned the nostrils. All that heated to fiery temperatures was enough to make the filly one in desperation. Help! With her eyes still shut, Luna let out a satisfied moan as she licked her lips. Meanwhile, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo sat there in shock, mouths agape at what they had just witnessed. What the fuck just happened? Scootaloo blurted. The woods were deathly silent as Luna laid there in contentment, her eyes still shut, while the filly simply sat there in disbelief. Luna? Scootaloo said finally. 
There was a pause, but then Luna's eyes shot open, glowing with an intense blue ethereal light. Her pupils have dilated into reptilian slits. Nightmare Moon. She spoke in an illustrious demonic voice, followed shortly with another growl from her stomach. With terrifying suddenness, the two of them quickly found themselves enveloped in the same magical aura Apple Bloom had been enveloped in and lifted off the ground, flailing about in panic. Scootaloo tried to free herself, but before she could do anything, she found herself having been lodged head first straight down Nightmare's throat. She gasped, feeling the powerful crushing rings of muscle constrict around her, quickly being stuffed down. The eager gullet on a one-way trip to join her little earth pony friend. Soon, all that was left was a huge bulge of her body sliding down Nightmare's throat, a few feathers that lingered in the alicorn's mouth, and she purred. Mmm, tastes like chicken. Luna! Luna, stop! It's us! Please stop this! Sweetie Belle protested as her costume was torn from her body by the alicorn's magic. Our candies are behind the tree over there! Please! Don't do this! Take the candy instead! Nightmare only chuckled wickedly as her mouth salivated with anticipation. It's Nightmare Moon, little fool! And I'm still famished. Sweetie Belle squeaked as she felt her rear stuffed into Nightmare's maw. Her back legs forced forward as she quickly sank into the hungry throat. No! She blurted out before she disappeared from view, vanishing into the muscular canal of Nightmare's gullet to join her two friends inside their fleshy tomb. Licking her lips, Nightmare rose to her hoofs, noting how swollen her stomach was. She chuckled gleefully, admiring how far the three distorted her belly as it wobbled back and forth below her. All around the three fillies, the churning, rippling motion of the folded walls intensified. What had been peaceful rolling was now becoming more violent, kicking, and pulsing with devious intent. Suddenly, she felt something begin to rise in her chest, rising up her throat until it reached its peak. In that instant, a thunderous belch roared out of the princess's throat as the stomach compressed upon its occupants, along with it coming Apple Bloom's pink bow, which splattered on the forest floor, covered in steaming, viscous fluids. Nightmare patted her massive gut fondly, feeling a figure moving within as she did. It had taken a while, but after 20 minutes, the cutie mark crusaders were no more. Their remains would soon be fully digested, taking only a matter of hours. Thanks for the meal, little ones. She coddled. A churning gurgle was all she got in response, filling bubbles of gas quickly filling her bowels. Her puckered hole winced open, a jet of stinking rancid air puffing out with a quiet whine, followed by a clap of flesh as her fattening ass cheeks clapped shut. I haven't eaten that well in ages. This will ruin my figure, but... It was so worth it. Have fun being ass fat, my little ponies. I think it's time I go find some unexpected dessert. As she trotted away, making her way towards town, she noted as three new points of light appeared in her mane. She smiled at them tenderly, knowing that she would remember them fondly as the first in her new reign. Oh yes, remember them fondly, she would. But for now, time to make up for lost time. 
Her stomach was growling in anticipation. Just carry on, don't mourn, rejoice every time.